video, I will show you how you can test your microwave oven components in the event that your microwave oven fails to operate properly. Now, back here we have a microwave oven transformer. We're going to test the transformer. Now these little transformers are PC mounted transformers that I will show you how to test in the event that your whole display does not work. When your microwave is plugged in and you do not get anything, you should be able to at least see the clock come on and the digital display. If that doesn't happen, then you're going to want to check your fuse. Now the first thing you want to do before working on the microwave oven is you want, number one, you want to unplug it from the wall. Then you want to remove the metal cover. Usually it's screwed in from the rear and along the bottom edge. Once you unscrew the cover, then you will lift up the back of the cover and pull the whole cover off of the microwave. Now once you open it, the most important thing you want to do to avoid getting a deadly shock, you want to locate the high voltage capacitor. Now these are two of them right here that they're going to look like. All right, And they're usually located right next to your high voltage diodes. Now once, you, once the unit's unplugged and you located the capacitors, you have to discharge these capacitors before you do any testing. You're going to take this discharging tool that I made, which is nothing more than a 20,000 ohm resistor, 20K ohms, and I hooked up an alligator clip on each end. You're going to take a regular screwdriver or Phillips, doesn't make a difference, and you're going to clamp one of these clamps onto the blade of the screwdriver, just like that. The other end of the clamp is going to go onto the metal chassis of the microwave oven. Once this is connected to the metal chassis of the oven and the other end is connected to your screwdriver, you're going to touch to the terminal and hold it there for maybe five seconds. Then you're going to go to the other side and touch it there also. Now once you have the resistor touch to each terminal for about five seconds. Once you've done that, the next thing you want to do to confirm that this is indeed discharged is to take a pair of needle nose with good insulated grips. You can open the needle nose and then put one part of the needle nose into this terminal and one into that terminal and hold it there. If, if you see any spark, that means it wasn't discharged. But just push it around and hold it there for a minute and then you should be good to go. Once you've confirmed that the capacitor has been discharged, you're going to get some masking tape and you're going to wrap it around all the wires in this terminal to ensure that you don't confuse them later on. When you put it back, it doesn't make a difference if it's this way or this way. It's not polarized. You can just put all the ones in that terminal and that terminal. Inside the capacitor is generally a resistor, which bleeds down the voltage once the power has been taken off the microwave oven. As you can see in the schematic right here, you'll see that there's a, there's a symbol for a capacitor at the bottom, and right above it, it says 10 meg ohm resistor. Besides you discharging this with the resistor that you have, it already has a built-in resistor. Now, once the capacitors have been discharged, it's a very simple process to check to make sure that they function properly. You want to set your meter to the lowest setting, which in my case is 200 ohms. One terminal and connect it to one probe of the meter. And you're going to take the other terminal and connect that to the other terminal of the capacitor. You should have no reading if that capacitor is not shorted. So that's a good sign. So you're going to leave, remove, now you're going to remove one wire from the capacitor set the meter to the 20 meg setting or higher and then you want to check from terminal to the can terminal to the can this should not give you any reading so I'm now going to check to the can nothing move this wire to the other terminal now rub the can nothing you just confirmed that the capacitor is good now also you want to make sure the capacitor is not puffy like it's trying to blow up when you look at it 
make sure there's no leaks. So if there's no leaks and the can shows no signs of, that it was trying to explode, that if it's puffy and the test came out okay, you could rule the capacitor out. Now the next step is your microwave oven diode. Now there's two ways of testing the microwave oven diode. Now to test this, you're going to want to make sure the meter is set to 20 volts. You're going to want to take your digital multimeter and connect the, the black probe, which is the ground, the negative, to where the line is on the diode. You can see where there's a triangle pointing towards the line, so you want to make sure the black probe is connected to the bottom where the line is. You're going to take the negative from the car battery while the engine's running and you're going to connect it to the same place where your negative to your meter goes. You're going to want to take the positive from your car battery and you're going to want to connect it into a resistor. You could use a 1K resistor, 1000 ohms. You could use a 500 ohm. You could use a now ideally a 1K ohm, but you could use less, you could use a few hundred ohms if, you, if that's all you have. You're going to connect the positive from your car battery to one side, and then you're going to put the other end into the diode, make sure it's securely in. That's the other end. The way the marking is, you have the triangle pointing towards the line. So the positive connects to this end going into the triangle, and then the line is the negative. So positive from the battery into your resistor, connecting into the diode. Now from the probe, you're going to connect a wire, a jumper, and that is going to go to where the two connect together. So at the junction between the resistor and the diode. You don't want to put the connector on the positive side. You want to put it between the resistor and the diode. Now a good diode generally test between like six and a half and ten volts and there you have it around six and a half now once you've completed that test and you've established that it falls within the six point five to ten volt range you could do another test to confirm that the diode is good and you're going to want to set your meter to the highest setting possible and a lot of meters don't have a setting over two hundred meg i mean over twenty megs this one goes up to 2000. If you have a 200, that's very good. Put it on 200. In my case, I have a 2000. So, putting the meter on the highest setting, you're simply going to put one, one probe to one end of the diode and the other on that end. Now you can see we're getting like 37 mega ohms, 35, 36. All right, that's good. Now when you take this off, and we're going to take the yellow and put that at the bottom now, and put the other terminal here, like that. This should show a much higher reading between, say, 180 and 350. So there you go. So now, as you can see, one direction, you have a much, much lower between 20 and 50 mega ohms, and the other direction, we're showing 280. So between, between this test and the voltage test, you just confirm that's a good diode. Now, to check the magnetron, you want to take a look, make sure there's no cracks. Take a look at the magnets. There's one here and one in front. Make sure they're not cracked. Look all the way around. Shake it. Make sure there's no rattling noises. Check over here. This white part all the way around. Make sure there's no cracks there. We're going to do a continuity test between these two terminals. And it should be an extremely low number, like 0.1 ohm. It has, you don't want it to be a dead short. You want it to have a little bit of resistance. So 0.1 is generally what these come in at. So I set the meter right now to the lowest setting, which is 200 ohms. Black probe connecting it to one terminal. I'm taking my red probe 
connecting it to this terminal. All right, so we're getting 0.6, but you also have to realize it's going to be a little lower than that because I'm going through a lot of jumper wires. If I check directly from the meter, it comes in around 0.2. So as long as you see around 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you're pretty good. The next thing to do is test from one terminal to the body of the magnetron. We're going to remove one of the probes from the meter and we're going to put this to a high setting of 20 mega ohm. When I touch the probe to the magnetron you should see nothing register on my meter. Now take off this one, switch it to the opposite terminal do it again. That tests good. Outside of hooking it up and powering it, that's as good as you're going to get for testing the magnetron. Now, to check the high voltage transformer. All right. Before testing the transformer, you're going to want to do the same routine with the labeling. Put a little piece of masking tape with like a number one. You could put a little one on the over here with the magic marker put a 2 and put a little 2 there, slide these off and you're good to go. You want to check the resistance between these two terminals and that's going to be done on the lowest setting which are minus 200. Take the meter, connect it to one of the terminals. Take the other probe and connect that to the other blade terminal on the primary and it should come in around less than one ohm. Now you don't want this to be a dead short. You don't want to see all zeros across. That's not good. You want to see like 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. So that tests good. So now leaving one terminal connected, we're going to remove this one and we're going to set this to a 20 mega ohm setting again. You're going to touch that to the body of the transformer where you clean the, the varnish off and you should see no reading. You're going to want to move this connector to the other blade and confirm no reading. You just verify the primary is okay. Now to test the secondary, the high voltage secondary, you're going to want to make sure you label the, the connections before you unplug them as you did with all the other components. And you're going to see in between, now below this big coil of wire here, there's a coil that's made up of this two red wires. We're going to check those first. And the way you're going to do that is the same way as before. We're going to put this meter on a low setting and one probe will connect to there and the other probe will connect to that one. And as you can see, you get a low reading again. One ohm or less is generally correct you want to make sure that there's no connection between either one of these wires and the core so we're going to put this up to the 20 meg again you leave one probe connected to one of the wires and then you touch that there you should see nothing happen on the meter put that back and then we're going to do the same thing take that one off let that reset and touch this one and that tests good. Now the high vo this one right here, the high voltage, you want to check this one between the wire coming out of the coil, all right, which is this big coil here, and you want to measure between this point and the body of the core. So I'm going to take one of my DMM leads and connect it there. I'm going to put this on a 200 ohm range. So one is on the high voltage going out and I'm going to touch that right to the core. 95 ohms. So between 80 and like 120 is the typical range. We just confirmed the transformer is fine. Okay, now the fuse is located where the power cord comes in on the filtering board. It's a small board about this big and it might have a, a toroid which looks like a donut with wire wrapped around it and you're going to locate this fuse and you can't tell if it's blown by looking at it because it's ceramic 
So the only way to test the fuse is to use your DMM set on a continuity setting. And you just touch your probes together. If it's good, so this is a simple test. Just touch each side of the fuse. And that is a good fuse. So that will rule out if that's bad. Now there's also these micro switches or cherry switches. Now this particular switch has two blades. When the switch is pushed in, the circuit closes. When it's out, the circuit's off. So you're going to want to disconnect one wire off the switch and then you're going to put your DMM on a continuity setting on one blade and you're going to take the other connector terminal on that blade and you're just going to push it, make sure it works. If it works fine a few times, that switch is good. You may come across another switch like this. This has a common and a normally open and a normally closed. So when you push the button in, one set should be active. And when you let go, another set should be active. So we're going to test that. Okay, I remove the connector. Just slides right off easily. To test this, you're going to want to go to, you're going to want to look for a terminal that says COM, which is this bottom one that says COM. Put one of your probes there. And take the other probe from your continuity tester, connect it to one. Push the button. That's working fine. Now this terminal here should be on when I connect the continuity tester. And when I push the button it should go off. Make sure you check all three switches. Sometimes there's four. And, if, and make sure the wires are connected good because these not working will cause the microwave not to work. The last part is the PC mounted transformer. So if your fuse is good and there's power going to the board but you still do not have any display, it's a good probability that this transformer is bad. They're all very similar. This one has three pins on one side and it has four on the other. And even though there's three, you're only using two, you're going to look very closely to see where the wires are connecting. See, this one has a wire going to that pin. And you can see there's a black wire going to the second pin. And the end pin is not being used. Now for this test, you're going to want to put the meter on a higher setting of 2000, 2K. You're going to put one probe on one side of the, of the winding and the other probe on the other side, the two terminals that have the wires on it. And we have 400 ohms. That's good. As long as you have a good reading there. You want to also measure using a high ohm resistance setting like on a 20 meg. Put it to 20 meg. And then you want to check from one terminal to the core. Make sure there's no connection between those two. So I'm going to touch it right now. Now remember, before you do this, you want to scratch the varnish off the core, otherwise you won't be able to get a good read on it. So you're going to touch it to there, and you should get no reading. Then you want to do the same on this side. You want to touch it to the core again. Make sure it's a shiny spot with the metals. Make sure you have a clean spot with the metal, and you should get no reading. Primary side is good. Now, This particular transformer has two sets of windings in it on the secondary. These two on the end will give you 11 volt output. And these two over here give about a 5.5 volt output. So you're going to want to check the two on the end. Now to test the secondary side, there's two sets of windings. In this case, the two pins on the right are 11 volts and the two pins on the left are 5. You're going to put your meter to the 2K setting, and you're going to leave one probe on one wire, one probe on one side of the winding. I'll touch this to the other. And we have 12 ohms. That's good. Now you want to go back to the high setting again, 20M, and you want to touch it to the body of the transformer, and you should have no reading whatsoever. Do the same for the other terminal 
Make sure there's no reading on that one also. Now you can check the other winding. Meter back to 2K. One probe to that pin on the right. And touch this to the left. Touch that to the left. And I'm getting 4 ohms, so that's fine. Go back to the high setting, 20 megs. And now let's check from one pin to the to the core. You should get nothing. And then when you move the red to here and check to the core, you should also get nothing. 